this is man-made mead. Today we are taking the blackberry braggot that has been sitting for approximately 17 or 18 days. It, as you can see, is uh, clearly got some activity that's happened and I've done some gravity checks and stuff over, over the past little bit and basically it is, um, it's pretty close to being completely done. We'll take another gravity check here in a few minutes. We're going to wrap it into this new um, new container and then clean that out and then put it back into, clean this out, excuse me, and then put it back into this. So I want to go ahead and get started and then we'll also do a taste test, gravity reading, and I'll talk about what the next step is. All right, so I finished uh, racking this over and there's quite a bit of sediment left in the original bucket and I, you know, I don't really want to get all of that garbage that's at the bottom in uh, the rest of the bracket. So I moved this over for, for a main reason that it's fermented for a long time. I don't want the, um, all of this, this bracket to sit on the, the old dead yeast and that stuff for too long and start to lose those flavors and to really just change um, and obviously the longer a yeast is sitting on something and it continues to feed, uh, if the yeast is not at its cap, it will continue to try and feed and can cause off flavors and off smells. I don't want that. So um, we're avoiding that. I was originally going to move it back into this, this bucket, but I've decided I'm going to leave it here because I'm actually going to put five more pounds of blackberries on top of this and let it sit for a little while. Uh, I do want to get a taste test though and see kind of where it's at currently. We're also going to get a quick gravity reading. So let's check on those two things. Our, our gravity reading shows that this is currently sitting at about 1.01. Uh, it was at 1.075, if I'm not mistaken. And um, now, so that means it has dropped 0.65. We're still have about, I'd say, how much ABV to go. If our yeast is going to complete it out, it'll be about a, uh, uh, it should be ultimately 10%, it's at 9% right now. So we have a little bit left. It'll still ferment, it's still actively fermenting, and that's okay. I want to go ahead and taste test it now and see what it's like. All right, so I'm going to already guess this is going to taste uh, a little yeasty because it's been stirred up and that's okay. It's got a great smell. Definitely a very beery smell. You get the uh, blueberry, goodness gracious, blackberry, so many berries. Uh, you get the blackberry smell right on the front of it, which is really interesting. And um, I think that with only two and as well, two and a half pounds of blueberries currently, that I think five more will really kick that flavor to the next level. Um, it's obviously not clear. That's fine. It's not going to be clear for a little while because of active fermentation, yeast kicking up, and those things. And this was uh, an American pale, so um, it's definitely a lighter beer, and that's mixed with our honey, of course. Um, it should be interesting. Oh yeah, that's really interesting. Dr um, still a little sweetness, that 0 .01 uh, gives it that, just a little bit of sweetness that you think in a mead, um, but you have that beer, um, hoppy beer, wheat taste, all of the crushed pale and the other various things we put in really shine through. The, the blackberry is uh, kind of on the background of the flavor. You get a little bit of that fruitiness, um, a little bit tannic, but it's not too bad. That's good, man. For my first bracket, I'm pretty, pretty content. With that, um, I think that, like I said, the blackberry adding the extras will really give it that next, um, that flavor that I want to go for. I want it to taste like a beer, but I also want it to have that mead-like ness to it. Um, and it'll it'll need some age, of course, but uh, ultimately with a braggot, with a beer, you can drink it faster where it doesn't need to age as long as like a mead needs to age for quite some time. And so I'm excited for that and the, to drink it faster and not have to wait so long to do it. Man, yeah, that's really good. Um, I'm excited for this, and I, I hope that um, you guys have enjoyed following this this journey so far, working on this braggot. Um, 
It's been really interesting to do it because I've never done something like this before and I get to make a new meat every single time. Um, I want to go ahead and show you all the, the blackberries that I'm going to go ahead and put into uh, it now. Alright, here are my fresh blackberries that I have. Um, occasionally I'll go ahead and freeze them and then thaw them and go through that process, but this time I bought these fresh. I only have three pounds um, because as I was buying them I realized blackberries are pretty expensive and so getting five pounds was a little bit uh, more challenging, so I just went with three. Overall there will be, that would put us at a total of, uh, what, six pounds? And I think that'll be just fine too. It's sitting in a star stain solution um, to help, of course, try and get any bacteria out of there, any bad bacteria that will fight against the current yeast that are in there. I'm tying this off, and the good thing about star stain is it's food safe. So I'll drain some of the star stain off of it, just like that, so I don't put too much in it. And use this bag to uh, try and hold all the, the blackberries together, which will also make it easier to take out in the end. So we'll let this drain real fast, it's almost there, and then we'll put it in. Alright, our blackberries are in here now, it's tied off pretty well, I want to make sure that it's not going to open up because the blackberries do kind of fall apart over time, and uh, that becomes an issue. What I'll do is I'll let these sit for about um, a week to two weeks, just like this, and taste it along the way and see how it's, how it's going, how the blackberry taste is imparting into the braggot, and then uh, ultimately I'll pull that off, and it'll be pretty quick to where I can start to actually uh, use my priming sugar and bottle it. But these blackberries will sit in for two weeks. I'll go through every every day and kind of poke this thing down to make sure that it doesn't, uh, the blackberries on the top that are not submerged do get submerged, ultimately. All right, it has been, um, since I put in the new, blackberries roughly about uh, two, uh, two weeks, about 15, 16 days. And now I want to go ahead and take them out of here and I'll show you in a moment what they, what they look like. They've been in this bag, of course. Um, I believe I've done some tasting and I think it's at a good point. I'm ready to go ahead and, um, and move it into a completely new container where it will sit for a little while longer and start to actually um, settle. We'll rack, rack it again to make sure there's no extra sediment. Um, I want to do this process quickly because the next step is priming sugar. So, take a quick peek at the blueberries. Uh, this is the blackberries sitting in there for about, like I said, roughly about 15 days. They are, they smell great. The weird thing about this, this braggot, is it kind of had a, uh, has a uh, whiskey kind of smell to it, which is really interesting. Kind of wish you guys could smell it. But you get the blackberry smell, you get the honey, you get the beer. I'm very excited for it. So we're gonna go ahead and move it over, take a taste test, of course, and we need to see where the gravity is and make sure it's still 1.00. So here's what we have. We have our braggot and we have um, quite a bit of sediment. Now that's all berries and dead yeast and there was some extra fermentation that happened so there's some sludge. That will go and just be kind of trashed. So this is the prized jewel, the thing we'll keep. And uh, the next step uh, is going to be to let this sit for a little while longer. Um, but I of course love getting to taste these things, especially in action. So let's do it. Taste test and a gravity reading. The uh, gravity is currently at 1.01, so we are a little bit above. Um, that's really interesting. So it had leveled out, and now, wow, okay, so we got a little bit of residual sweetness, so I'm surprised. I guess the, the beer yeast capped out pretty quick, so that's quite interesting. Let's go ahead and taste it. Here's our small taste test of it. Wow, that's really interesting. Um, you, you, right off the bat, you get the beer smell, you get the yeast, um, you get that, the hops are, are pretty prevalent still. 
um, and, the, and I think the malt is that sugar, so we have the blackberry is kind of more on the back end of the uh, taste. So it's like a, um, maybe more of like a hint of, of blackberry, which I wish there was a little bit more, um, to be honest, but uh, it's kind of the trade-off. Like I, with this big of a batch, I would probably have to do so many, so many blackberries, and with them not necessarily being so in season and accessible right now, it would have been really expensive to do that. I do think that uh, when this sits for a little bit longer, the stuff falls down, I rack it again, I want to go ahead and bottle it, and when I bottle, when I carbonate, I'm going to uh, do the priming sugar from the kit, and that should really add some extra depth to this one, which will be really interesting. Um, I think it'll add that, not that carbonation finishes off a of meat, but I definitely think it helps it sometimes. And it honestly can hide some mistakes, um, but that's not to be used. Don't use it to hide your mistakes by any means. Um, I do think it'll be interesting with this, for sure. The next step, I'm gonna go ahead and cover that up, let it set. I'll be back in just a couple days for another racking of this one, and then we'll go from there. All right, we are ready. We're on bottling day, which means that it's time to do our priming sugar. Um, our priming sugar, I've said it somewhere around here, is about five ounces, I believe. Yes, five ounces of priming sugar. And the uh, protocol for this now is we're going to take and put this in two cups of water, boil it for five minutes, and then, um, from there, we'll we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and put it into our braggot. Now, in the meantime, while that's boiling, while I set my timer, uh, I'll go ahead and move the bead over. So, let's go ahead and start our priming sugar, putting it into um, into this two cups of water to start boiling. Okay, we're ready to go ahead and put the priming sugar into the two cups of water. Um, and I've used like the same spring water um, I just poured two cups of it into here. We're gonna pour it straight in, and this is going to sit and dissolve in here for five minutes. Um, so we're gonna let that go. I need to stir just a little bit to make sure we're dissolving and not burning on the bottom. Um, and then, while this is going, I set my timer, as I always do. We need to um, start siphoning over the braggot into a um, into a bottling uh, bucket. Okay, so we need to take a final gravity reading to see where it finally landed. And it's, you probably can't see it from here right now, but it is sitting at 1.01, um, which means that we have about, it started at 1.09, which meant our possibility was, uh, our ABV possibility was around 12%. We got to about 0 0.08, so we have about a 10.25-ish um, ABV, and I think that's about fair between the honey and the blackberries. So, uh, that's great, 10.5%, that's pretty strong, pretty good. Um, my other worry, the one worry I have is that there's a little sediment in here, I wanna make sure that doesn't happen, so I have a funnel here with a grate at the bottom, and I'm gonna go ahead and start moving it over into um, this new container. All right, our, um, our priming sugar is done before we get to start Putting this in, I have uh, star sand in this bucket, and it is ready to be used for bottling. Um, uh, we just go ahead and went ahead and poured the priming sugar mix in. We are now going to start moving over the braggot on top of this and using our filter funnel here to avoid getting any extra. funnel there's a bunch of stuff at the bottom that's what I kept from getting into the braggot um, now the next step for us is going to be bottling it um, we said the final gravity was 1.01 10.25 10 
10% ABV. It is ready to be bottled. So I'm excited to go ahead and do that. I've got a bunch of clean bottles. Bottles that I've, um, I've put basically star sand and through some star sand solution. Um, and I'll show you my bottling process. It's really simple and easy. I almost forgot to mention, we need to stir this mixture too because we did have the um, everything on the bottom. So I'm gonna stir for about a minute or two. This is also useful for degassing and making sure, which really isn't too big of a deal about degassing right now, um, but this just helps mix in that priming sugar. And the, uh, while I'm doing this, I mentioned that the priming sugar is what gives us the natural carbonation. If you ever wondered about how to carbonate a mead, how to carbonate a beer, um, naturally without force carbonating it, it's by keeping some yeast alive, which is what's happened here. I've not killed any fermentation, the yeast are still alive. And um, they ha now have some sugar to kind of feast on, so to speak, um, which will give this, this mead, or this braggot, some carbonation, uh, and I'm excited for that. All right, we are ready to start bottling. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take and put this bucket on top of here for an even higher surface to, um, actually, no, I don't need to do that. Just put that here. And we are going to bottle straight into, um, into here, into these bottles. So uh, I have a, if you've ever bottled something, I have a auto siphon connected to a bottling wand. The bottling wand is, has a little button on the bottom that you press and that lets the, the liquid go through. And I just stick it into the beer bottle and the auto siphon does its job, does the siphoning, and I'm able to stop the fill whenever I feel necessary. So um, let's go ahead and start bottling. We have bottled um, all of it. I have not counted how many. I think we're, let's see, 16. Oh goodness. Uh, 26. We're at roughly about 38 beer bottles for, uh, I think it was four gallons. So the next step is to go ahead and cap them. When you're using beer bottles, you need to, I prefer to use the beer bottles that have this uh, lip on it that are not the um, normal twist off because they don't work very well for home brewing stuff. So whenever you buy them or you reuse them, try to save them that way. I'm using blue caps that will hopefully seal well and give us our carbonation. Uh, I'll do one and then basically I'll do the rest in a sped up version because it's just a repetitive process. With this, it's as simple as pushing it down and you're done. So now I'll go ahead and uh, cap the rest of these, and then um, the next step would be labeling. All right, we have bottled all of them. The total count is 42 um, beer bottles worth, so that's pretty fair for uh, relative for four gallons, um, four and a half maybe. We had about 10, was that eight? Whatever the math would be there. Um, uh, that's a pretty good ratio. You normally get about 10 to 12 for a gallon. So I'm very content with that. Next step is going to be to put my labels on them. So um, here are the labels for them. All right, here we are ready to go ahead and put our labels on. So here, I'll show you one of my labels. Um, they look like this it is my Blackberry Braggot. And um, I went with so I have, of course, the man-made mead idea, the hand sign, sign language, this is B. Um, so for those of you who don't know, so I want to go Blackberry Braggot, kind of as a unique thing. Um, one day I'll go further into everything that happens with my labels, but basically the only, the way I label these is I, of course, stick them on and um, I figured out over time with lots of air, you have to, it's easier if you're not if you're using both hands, but uh, for me, if you're putting on a label, at least the way I do it, you have to crease down the middle, push the sides first. Oop, and I got a crease in there. First one's always the worst. It's like pancakes. Okay, so that was not my best example, but um, now that's kind of what we have, what we look like. 
without, of course, the creases in the future. And I now have a bunch more to do. I have all of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those and I'll be back. All right, so I've uh, gone ahead and bottled, or excuse me, labeled all of them now. They all have our nice Braggot label on them. And uh, I'm excited to let these go ahead and bottle carbonate for the next, um, it'll probably take about two weeks to bottle carb, um, which means that I'll be waiting for a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and let them sit. And then in the future, I'm gonna do a taste test once they've bottle carbonated to kind of see how they are. Um, so that's the end of the braggot. That is the whole, I mean, I've only done a couple videos on it, but the process of from going from the pail, making our beer, adding the honey in, um, then this one was all about doing the blackberries, how many blackberries we put in, and then the secondary with the blackberries, um, and just racking, and all those things. The most important thing to know is uh, the beer moves a little faster than our normal mead, so it's good you can kind of churn out more beers in that way, more uh, braggots, so I like that a lot. But uh, what I also want to uh, do is make more of these with different kinds of beers, so maybe a stout with something paired, or maybe an Indian Pale Ale or something paired to that. So ultimately, we're gonna try some different things, but this is my first braggot. I'm very excited, very um, uh, enthused, and, and just, I'm glad how it came out so far, and I can only hope that it will get better with some carbonation and age. Um, now, one thing you can do to help me is check out a bunch of links down below. I have a Facebook page where we have a great community of people making mead, talking about mead. Uh, it is awesome to get to communicate with you guys, like 300 plus people are now in it. Uh, there's also a Patreon where you can support me and help me be able to keep doing this and uh, buy equipment and whatnot to where I, I can make better videos for you every time. Um, and then uh, there's a merchandise store. There's a, a ton of links down below and I appreciate your support. Uh, make sure to, to, if you want to know when I upload, there's a little bell and uh, that will notify you, oh, hey, man made me uploaded. Um, and that helps me out. And of course, share, do all those things. Keep making mead, share mead with your friends, be the ambassadors for mead that I think we all are. So uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate uh, your support and I hope you guys have a wonderful day and cheers.